one of the things that I always find so like hard here in LA, I was doing a bit about that yesterday, is you know, finding real friendships here in Los Angeles, you know, because yeah. I think like everyone has like an ulterior motive sometimes or like an agenda, you know, every, everything is about like how many followers you have or like usually, yeah. you know, and it's, and it gets like a, sometimes a little bit complicated, you know, and you will think that maybe people who are not from here will not be like that, you know, and then you, it's kind of like everywhere right now. I don't know if it, it it's crazy. Yeah, I think the unfortunate thing is, especially like in this world that we work in, like we're kind of um, bred to to compete with each other, right? And so we're, you know, it's not the way I like to operate. I think I, growing up in LA, um, was able to kind of see it from afar where you see everyone from Minnesota and Idaho and they're the top of their town. And then they come to LA and realize everybody was the top of their town and everyone's coming here to be, you know, famous and rich and whatever. And they realize there's a lot of competition. So you then start to compete with each other. And I feel like even in this world, you know, our audience loves housewives and they love Bravo. So a lot of the times they try to pit us against each other be like, did you hear what so-and-so said about you on their show? And so it just like becomes this like weird combative, like I need to be better than you or I need to succeed more than you and it, uh, to me I don't like to operate that way to me it's like there's room for everyone so we should all be able to kind of like collectively you know support each other um rather than but I do think it's hard because we do have audience members that love Bravo so they love the drama and so they want to see the drama with their own content creators and I have people send me stuff all the time of like did you see what this person said and did you see what that person said and so I always like to make sure I, if somebody sends me something or they tell me something that someone else said, I like to watch it for myself and look at the context in which certain things were said before I make a judgment about another creator. But for the most part, I try to, I know I can have a moment where I can pop off on a bitch, but like I try to not have problems with other creators. But when other creators are fucking foul and they want to see other people fail and they, you know, do things to harm other people behind the scenes, I don't fuck with that shit and I will call it out and you've seen me <laughs> you've seen me fall into that. I mean, um, it's just like you cannot poke a bear and poke it and poke it and expect that nothing is going exactly. to happen. Exactly. Denise Richards, you poke the bear far enough and I'm going to snap. All right? Yeah. You want to yeah. come for a fight and I'm going to give you a fight. And yeah. I will get savage. That is, that is so true. And like what you were saying, like I always feel like, yes, there is so much space for everyone. You know, yeah. especially, I mean, to me, it's on the Bravo world, like we all love Bravo, we all love the tea, wherever, but the tea is the same. And yeah. We all going to be talking about the same tea anyway. You know, so it's all about like I feel like our communities that we build are, they, they want to know like what we are thinking and what you are thinking, yeah. the other person's thinking, you know. So it's kind of like a little bit for everyone. But you know, when they when when they put themselves into this drama just to go against us, I, I just don't get it. You know, I just don't get the whole idea of like I need to be the only one, you know, and I, I it's okay if you want to be maybe the big the best one, you know, but why trying to like destroy the competition? Like, I don't get that part, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you were fucking talented, you wouldn't need to try so hard to tear down the co the competition in your eyes. Maybe try to not be so vanilla and mediocre, and then you wouldn't need to compete with people. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, people will help you more. I mean... Exactly. And here's the thing. Your audience and my audience, Andy... Some of them are the same and some of them are different. Some people like your opinion. Some people like my opinion. Like it's going to resonate with different people. And that's just the, to the core foundation of who that person is. You know, They're, whether it's your opinion, whether it's the way you deliver, whether it's your style, like whatever it is, that's going to resonate with people. And you have to just trust that if you put yourself out there fully and authentically, that you're going to find people that are going to resonate with you rather yeah. than trying to, you know, pander to people or, you know, try to knock down other creators because you think that that's going to help you stay on top. Like it's just it's unnecessary and you know we can all continue to to be successful because at the end of the day if we have 10 people in a room not all 10 people are going to love you and not all 10 people are going to love me you know the room's going to be divided regardless so yeah. let them let the people decide what resonates with them and where they want to go and who they want to support and just continue to cultivate those people rather than giving your energy to other shit been like yes girl and, you know and it expose him you know and all the lies you know you told me to say this you told me to say that you told me like she wouldn't be like Oh my God, you know, like Raquel over here. And yeah. and, and Tom Sandoval wouldn't like keep being destroyed again, you know. But uh yeah. she could have come back and destroyed Tom and then destroyed Ariana because she would have come back, she would have dumped Tom, and the audience would have been on her side because they would have been like, Yes, girl, we're rallying for you. We've all been in that situation with you know a toxic guy that you know thinks that he can control us, whatever. She would have been empowered, she would have stood on her own, and then people wouldn't have really understood why Ariana was holding on to such a bone. Because look at how hard everyone's like, Ariana needs to let the house go. Like people would have wanted Ariana to move on from hating Rachel so much 
that eventually I think she would have won the audience over and had a better redemption arc. It wouldn't have been easy. It was going to be messy. She was going to get pushed back from Katie, maybe a little bit from Sheena. You know, Schwartz was going to be flopping in the middle. But eventually, I feel like she would have been able to really make a name for herself on the show. And she oh. really fumbled the ball. And then, then, you know, do like a whatever product, you know, and bring money from that. You know? oh, yeah, whatever, you know, like girl, sometimes I'm feeling like I wish that I could possess people to make yep. them do the right thing, you know, because it is, I don't get it. It is so obvious what some of these people need to do sometimes. Yeah, I need to have like a coaching business where we coach reality stars on like how to not yeah. screw up. And if how you to be more than a one season wonder, like come to us, you know, Here we, we will. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god! All right, um, we're almost done. So I just want to know, like, very quickly, like, uh, your thoughts on uh, Beverly Hills and Miami, which a lot of people are actually really liking Miami. Beverly Hills, it's kind of like I, I, I know that it, there is not too much going on, but the ratings are good. So I don't know, like, how do you feel about all of that? Um, I like Beverly Hills. I feel like it's grown a load. It's grown a little stale for me in these past couple of episodes. Like, we've had some fun moments, but I just feel like this isn't the best season we've had of Beverly Hills, but I wouldn't say it's the worst season we've had of Beverly Hills either. I think it's been fine. We've had some good moments. Love the Denise versus Erica stuff. The we dinner was good. I'm curious to see what more we get from Kyle and Mauricio because we've kind of just gotten little nuggets here and there. Um, so I think it's been a fair season, maybe a good like B minus. Um, I know people aren't loving Anne Marie. I feel like the women just kind of phoned it in this season with exception for Sutton. I feel like Sutton's the only one that's really kind of showing up and trying to deliver. Um, but I don't think it's the worst season we've had at Beverly Hills. I'm enjoying it. I'm looking, well, I, I don't know. I'm not really looking forward to the reunion because from what I've heard about it, it's not that great. Yeah, it's going to be like, throw that two-part reunion in. That's I hope it's only two parts because, again, from what I've heard, it just does not sound very interesting. You know, the um, only way that I will have like a three part reunion, and that is like honestly reaching too much, but like I, it will be if they will do like a one on one with Mauricio and Kyle to like, you know, I don't know if you ever watched Marriage yeah. Medicine, like they did one with uh, Quad and, you know, the little guy that he was, she was married to. Maybe they will do something like that. Maybe I will watch a third part, but I, I honestly believe that it, it, this needs to be a two part reunion. Yeah, it, I, I can't imagine it getting a three part reunion, even with like the Kathy Hilton edition. Like it just, I, you know, we'll we'll see what it brings, but it'll be interesting to see what they end up doing with the show moving forward. Who they keep, who they let go. Are they going to keep to read? Are they going to keep Crystal? Like, you know, I feel like at some point we kind of have to shake things up a little bit. What do you feel about this new voice of Crystal? You know, do you think that this is going to because oh no, of course it's not going to be on the show, but do you think that she just finally gets fed up and now this is the the new thing that we're going to get like next season if she come back. For me, it's like a little too, little too late. You know, it's like you had a chance. She was, she came out the gate strong. Remember when she was fighting with Sutton in the beginning and she was calling her out. She was like, oh, you're the girl that doesn't see white. And, you know, we have the ugly leather pants moment. Like she came out of the gate very strong. And then she really just like dug the grave for herself with the, you know, Sutton violated me. And then, oh, Sutton said something so dark, but I don't want to say what it is. And then we get to the reunion. She's like, oh, well, it wasn't. It was my perception that it was dark. Like Crystal does a lot of that, like my truth. And I, you need to acknowledge my truth. And it's just... I just feel like she's fatiguing. I was rooting for Crystal and I kept wanting Crystal to like deliver. And she's like kind of delivering now, but like, I don't know. They may keep her around for another season, but I just feel like I could do without her. We can, I'm good moving on without Crystal. I feel like she had a chance and, you know, Anne Marie was right. She definitely made Crystal relevant. You have to give her that. Without Anne Marie, we wouldn't have gotten this Crystal. And how do you feel about Dorit and like, you know, everything that is happening to her? Um, it's hard with Dorit too because I feel like Dorit's not really giving much either but here's the thing I think these women are are checked out because there's not anything to clock in with you know what I mean that's why we spent so much time talking about an esophagus because there's nothing to talk about there's no you know real life scenario that people are bringing to the table that you know these women can discuss like a Girardi scandal like that carried it for the last two seasons that now it's like you know what is there to really discuss or talk about these women don't have the chemistry they're not genuinely friends at the end of the day like you can feel such a disconnect even when you know one of the friendships that i think we came to appreciate the most was kyle and dorit and then kyle going on watch what happens live and saying oh dorit and i were never really that close to begin with the 